who's the most talked about person in the talent show? Or the Olympics? Or just about any event that you can think of? Who is it that melts the hearts of the audience and gets everyone rooting for them to win? It's the underdog. Whether it's Eddie the Eagle or the Jamaican bobsled team, everyone's talking about them. Most events have somebody who's disadvantaged in some way. Somebody who melts the hearts of the audience. Not only are people rooting for them to win, but they're talking about them. Can you imagine having a brand like that? A brand where everyone's rooting for you to succeed. It's very powerful. One of the most powerful strategies a brand can use to influence word of mouth and viral spread is underdog strategy. There are two main ingredients to making marketing content or even an entire brand an underdog. First, you must create the illusion of genuine unfairness. It's not enough just to create an illusion of being disadvantaged. People need to develop an understanding that the source of disadvantage is genuinely unfair. Second, you need to create the illusion of effort over ability. This is where you create an impression that the personal brand or situation is using effort to try to succeed, nothing to do with existing skills or abilities. In other words, the focus is on the brand or person in a situation trying to succeed, independently of their ability and skills. So the first criteria is genuine unfairness. If you create a character in marketing content or a brand itself, it's essential that the story you create communicates an unfair disadvantage, not just any disadvantage. The disadvantage suffered by the character needs to be genuinely unfair. An unfair disadvantage creates a sense of injustice, whereas a simple disadvantage will tend to be ignored. People won't necessarily feel empathy towards someone who's simply disadvantaged in some way. Creating a disadvantage without unfairness might even have the opposite effect of what is intended and create a sense of what we call schadenfreude, which is a human tendency to derive pleasure from the misfortunes of others, not the intended empathy and sense of injustice that you're aiming for. One simple way to portray a disadvantage as unfair is to humanize the disadvantaged character. Take, for example, a homeless person on the street. Unfortunately, homeless people tend to be ignored and although most people might feel some degree of empathy for them, they don't tend to dwell on it for too long. But if the homeless person's name and story is known, it humanizes them and people are more likely to feel their circumstances are unfair. What's their name? Their background? How did they end up on the streets? Do they have a family somewhere? Once people understand the similarities between the disadvantaged person and themselves, it humanizes the disadvantaged person, creates a belief of unfairness, and therefore stronger empathy and willingness to help, or at least root for the person to ultimately succeed. One of the most difficult markets to get a foothold in is the toy market. It's a billion dollar market dominated by a handful of very large behemoths, notoriously difficult to succeed in. One brand that did extremely well entering the toy market and establishing a foothold was Goldie Blocks. They did this by identifying a target market that they thought they could build a successful underdog strategy from, and they were incredibly successful. The target market they chose was young girls still at school. They made use of a recent OECD study that found that young girls lacked self-confidence in their ability to solve mathematics and science problems. And generally they achieved worse results in school in these subjects than they otherwise should have. Essentially, they're at a disadvantage compared to the boys. Their campaign centered on the fact that girls are unfairly disadvantaged at school, and this helped them build a strong underdog strategy and enter the market successfully. The Gordy Blocks theme was, little girls are underdogs, and our brand is here to help them triumph by using our toys. The brand not only emphasized that the girls are disadvantaged, but that the disadvantages they have in a male-dominated world are unfair. That's the secret with any underdog strategy. 
you have to lead the consumer to believe that not only is there a disadvantage, but that disadvantage is somehow very unfair. That's what activates people's empathy and gets them on your side. Goldie Blocks did this very well when entering the ultra-competitive toy market, and as a result, they were very successful. The other part of building a successful underdog strategy is emphasizing effort over ability. The difference between effort and ability is that effort is perceived to be under someone's control, but ability is perceived to be not under someone's control. Effort is directly associated with the task at hand, and people who try hard are generally more respected than those who don't try hard but have a capable ability. The Gaudi Blocks brand nailed the effort over ability angle. They created an advertisement which showed the young girls, when faced with boredom watching TV, decide to demonstrate their analytical and engineering potential by constructing an elaborate Rube Goldberg machine using only their girly toys, demonstrating effort over ability. Most people's perceptions of young girls are as cute and vulnerable little people. But in the advertisement, the girls are intelligent, powerful, capable human beings, triumphing over adversity by performing an impressive and surprising feat. Their princess machine video about young girls claiming their place in a male-dominated world currently has close to 3 million views on YouTube. But let's compare the success of the Gaudi Blocks brand with a brand where things didn't work out so well. Powerade were number two in the sports drinks market behind Gatorade. They produced an advertisement that featured the Powerade basketball team in a locker room being given a pep talk by their coach just before a game. The coach reminds the team that although their opponents may have better resources, gold uniforms, star players and the crowd on their side, that they can somehow power through and triumph. Now, does this signal an unfair disadvantage? Well, no. Although it's clear in the movie that the Powerade team might not have the same equipment and star players, the disadvantage is not perceived by the viewer as being unfair. It's simply a disadvantage. The coach made several comparisons between the Powerade team and the competition to create an illusion of disadvantage, but the apparent advantages held by the opposing team did not create the illusion of genuine unfairness. If the story included some mitigating factors that were preventing them from matching the opposing team, perhaps because of social or financial hardship, then the illusion of genuine disadvantage could have been created. In terms of effort over ability, there's also no evidence in the Powerade movie that the Powerade team are trying to succeed. Unfortunately, the whole movie was filmed in a locker room. To get that part right, they would have had to actually show the players playing or some other actions to communicate their effort. In contrast, the princess machine successfully communicates effort over ability by demonstrating how the young girls were able to work together using simple toys to build an elaborate and impressive spectacle. If you're trying to make an underdog strategy with content, you need to effectively communicate that the characters, which might include the brand incidentally, is expending incredible effort. In other words, they're trying. And this effort is independent of, and doesn't necessarily rely on, any skills that the character or brand might have. 